Josh's Order Corner. That's me. Someday I will get the light in here just right that you don't lose my beard in my shirt. It's But I hate white shirts. <sighs> but that doesn't matter. We're going to talk about Cinema Wasteland. It was this past weekend. It was an amazing, amazing time. It's insane that they've been doing this for so long. And it's basically by word of mouth. They don't have a huge social media presence. Uh, but people all over the country know about Cinema Wasteland. Even my good friend Uncle Ed, who is uh, in charge of the vendor room over at Chiller, he knows about Cinema Wasteland because all the vendors that do Cinema Wasteland just talk it up all over the place. And that's awesome. I have nothing but good things to say about Cinema Wasteland, so if anything comes out that I'm talking shit, I promise you I am not. The only thing that I wish we could see change is a bigger social media presence, like more awareness on who the guests are going to be in advance. I've heard rumors about who's coming in April. I'll talk about that later. Uh, hopefully I don't forget. But the website always has everybody on there. The Facebook always has everybody on there. Uh, but you kind of don't see much else advertised. And it would just be awesome for the guests to get their their shine, you know. And again, that's not talking shit. That's just like, it would be cool to see. So. I made a video for this past weekend, but I dropped it like last minute. And that was my bad. I, I should have dropped it sooner. Not like I have a huge push, but whatever. Uh, I'll do the same thing for the April one. Uh, Tom Atkins, I hear, is coming. And there was another name, but I can't remember off the top of my head who I heard rumors of. Uh, but Tom Atkins, that's fucking awesome. Thrill me, right? So he's supposed to be there, among others. Cinema Wasteland Movie and Memorabilia Expo. It is a vendor's dream. All of the vendors there are so nice and so happy to be there. It's insane. I had gone once before, uh, about two or three years ago, they had the cast for the anniversary of the original, um, oh man, My Bloody Valentine. And I went to meet Tom Savini at that, at that uh, particular event. And it's funny because I remember the setup of the vendors when I went to that one and going again this year, it was like the same kind of setup. Um, similar, same vendors in many cases, and then others just similar. Now, Cinema Wasteland is, like I said, a word of mouth expo. I don't want to call it a convention because that's not how they brand themselves, but an expo. And it's a very kind environment. Like everyone there from the vendors to the attendees to the guests that they bring in, to the people who run it, are all super kind individuals. So I really do look forward to the opportunity to work with them again in the future. In this case, I had the opportunity to, to work at the event through uh, my friend Jason Nelson that I knew from Hot Topic and an event prior to that years ago when he almost got crushed by the barricade at a Slipknot show. He knows a man named Matt Osborne. If you watch his, my videos often and you go to conventions, you probably know who Matt is as well. I knew his name. Didn't know who he was exactly, but I knew the name. And he needed some help at this uh, expo with some of the guests he was bringing in. And Jason asked me if I was be interested. It's like 15 minutes from my house. So I said, hell yeah. This is the kind of shit that I've been wanting to do. I've really wanted to get involved in conventions in this way as you know by me helping out with SIGSCOM out in uh, Motor City in Detroit um, and then in Chiller later in October so this was the opportunity of a lifetime and I have nothing but awesome things to say it was a great experience so first I'm going to talk about everything but the kind of work side of things I don't even call it work because it was too cool to be considered work uh, so we're going to talk about some of the vendors, some of the stuff that I grabbed. Kujo's coughing in the background, so we'll take a small break, and I'll start recording again here in just a moment. But some of the other autographs that I got, like I said, and I picked up a couple little things uh, that I'll show you and give some highlights to uh, the vendors that I saw, and we'll go from there. All right, so like I said, I'm going to save the sleepaway camp stuff. Ooh, I don't think I mentioned that's who was there yet, but whatever, there it is. Uh, uh, I'm going to save that till the very end of this video. That's when we'll talk about all the sleepaway camp stuff, how awesome that was. But as I was working with Karen Fields, who played Judy, a woman came through her line for an autograph, and she had this book and this stuffy. 
and they were both adorable. And I knew that Annie would absolutely lose her mind over it. And she was talking to Karen and talking about how she uh, got the book there and everything. So I was listening very intently. I'm going to cheat here. Dirk Manning is the writer, creator of the horror comic series Tales of Mr. Ray and Nightmare World, as well as several other comic book series and graphic novels. Aside from writing horror comics, Dirk is also the author of Right or Wrong, A Writer's Guide to Creating Comics, and has written several short films for the popular YouTube horror series Black Box TV, including The Hunger, The Night Shift, and Zombie. Dirk's been a semi-regular guest at, at Cinema Wasteland for several years, and if you've been yearning to read some great modern horror comics or are interested in the craft of writing for comics or film, be sure to stop and chat with him. He's also willing to offer a little advice for the asking. When he's not set up at Cinema Wasteland or on the road attending several comic shows and conventions around the country, you can find Dirk prowling the internet. Uh, that is right from Cinema Wasteland's website, and Dirk was super nice. I can't show you in person or whatever uh what i got for annie because she took it and ran and i'll probably never be able to get it from her grasp but i'll show a picture of it right here uh, chathulu jr and uh he had another one about superheroes that i thought about getting for addy but it sounded like it might be a little too scary for her so i passed on it uh but dude was such a super nice guy if you have the opportunity to meet him Highly recommend. Another place that I stopped by was uh, Red Death Studios. They were right at the end of our aisle. So whenever I looked over, there they were. And they had a shirt that I just couldn't stop looking at. It is right here behind me. They sell work shirts. And I've never really worn this style before. So we'll see if I can rock it. I feel like with the mullet, it's a match made in heaven. But look at that. Barlow on the back. That nice Salem's Lot poster. And then on the pocket here on the front, you have... Salem's lot there as well. Now, as you know, my big day is coming up. I'm getting married soon. So that means I was not there to spend money. I did my best not to shop around. I did stop by the Troma booth because uh, a friend of mine, Uncle Ed, he wanted, uh, he had asked if I would grab something from Uncle Lloyd. And of course, but since I was getting something, I decided and I know that Billy Dennis is going to ha 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 at me or something. But since I was getting something for Ed, I decided to go ahead and grab this guy right here. I'm not the biggest fan of the Toxic Avenger, but I'm a huge fan of Troma as a business, as an idea, as a, as a group. And Lloyd Kaufman is an awesome person. He's a great dude, super friendly, super nice. At the end of this video, there'll be some pictures of... Um, that experience so he signed it to jolly josh like he knew me already love uh, xo lloyd kaufman he had nothing but great things to say about the remake or the reimagining or whatever it is coming from uh the new toxic avenger movie he was very excited about it i got to see the funko pop it looks fucking awesome like love or hate funko pops they're here to stay i think for the next year or so anyways but it looks great. It's a great looking pop. I also met Tom Savini again because I had these pieces I really wanted to get signed. So we got on this creep show, big old floppy disk movie thing. He signed down there at the bottom. I fucked up when I gave him these. I wanted this one done in white, but I gave him the blue marker and he just he had signed it before I could realize my mistake. So I'm gonna be sending this off to uh, John Zulu who does conventions, Jay-Z convention help, uh, to add Harry Manverdini. And I'm terrified of how it's going to turn out because this is very busy. And it's going to be hard to find the right color to pop. So we'll have to figure that out. Thinking maybe have him sign up here and or have him sign up here and do the music notes here or something. I don't fucking know. I don't know. If it sucks, I'll just blame John. I'm kidding. I would never. Now, Tom Savini, if you've met him, you know he's very stoic. Like, he doesn't get very excited. He doesn't, like, leap for joy because you're there to meet him. Um, but he's legendary in what he does. So the opportunity to meet him, I highly recommend that you take advantage of that. It was really cool Friday getting there early and seeing him shop, like, just walking around um, and buying things for his collection uh, or for his family. I don't know. I didn't ask him. He was buying stuff. Uh, so that was cool. He also had this little box. It was a clear box. With a hundred dollar bill inside of it and he's sitting there playing with it when i went up to him and he's like try it 
you can open it, you can keep the hundred dollars. So I tried it, couldn't do it. And then on Sunday, as we were like, everything was kind of wrapping up. I was um, with uh, Jason Dom, the other Jason, Matt, and the members of the Subway cast uh, who hadn't left yet. And Tom comes over and he's letting Felissa try to open the box. He lets Matt try, Jason, we all try. A little bit later, Jason walks over to Tom's table with his friend Dom. And he's like, let, let Dom try. And Tom hands the box over to Dom. Dom takes it. And this is after seeing people all weekend trying to open this damn box. Dom takes this box and just busts it open immediately. Like, no hesitation. <clears throat> the look on Tom's face was priceless. It probably matched the look on our face the first time we saw the arrow go through Kevin Bacon's throat. Just, how did you do that? It was priceless. So that was an awesome Tom Savini moment and seeing him react to something like that was fantastic. And finally, let's talk about the Sleepaway Camp cast because I have nothing but great things to say about this experience. When I met Matt Friday, I already had, uh, I, was, I was there to work. I was there to, to really help out the best I could because I want him to remember me. So if he needs me in the future, I can do it again. Uh, he had, the tables were there. We just had to get the pictures up. So we got the pictures started getting those laid out, got their banners hung. Uh, he had the markers out on all the tables and had some extra ones. So I went through all of their markers from Felissa all the way down to Catherine uh, with a uh, top loader. And I tested all their markers for them and everything. So they'd be all set, good to go. And then he assigned me to Karen to help her out for the weekend, Judy. And man, it was so cool. Uh, if you know me in person, I can be a little awkward. It takes me a little bit of time to warm up to people. That's just how I am. So we had Felissa, we had Chris, Karen, Tom, and Catherine down the row. And so Tom was very chatty. He was super, super nice. Uh, he had like the longest flight of all of them. That dude is a world traveler. Catherine, I didn't get to talk to as much because she was on the other end, but she was so sweet. Uh, Chris, right next to me, he was also in Langoliers, and you know, I'm a huge Stephen King fan, so I was kind of like, oh shit, don't act like you're crazy about Stephen King movies and you know already who's in there, stuff like that. He was super nice, like making conversation throughout the weekend, and then, like I said, I warmed up by Sunday when we had no time left. And then Felissa, holy shit, if you ever been to a convention, you know what to expect from Felissa. She is awesome, she's bouncing off the walls in the best ways possible. Uh, wieners flopping around, little dinosaur T Rexes, Caucasaurus Rex. I don't think that's trademarked yet. Uh, it, it was it was awesome, and just the fans, like these fans coming through. And if you haven't seen Sleepaway Camp, you're missing out. It was 1983. This is the 40th year, uh, 40th anniversary of it, and it is a great movie. And it touches on some really surprising things, especially for that time. So some of the stories that we got to hear, and I would not for a second repeat any of them, but there was a couple of times where I, I was almost like teary eyed because of the things people were sharing. Like it was it was awesome. And everyone that was hearing these stories was so focused on listening and giving that fan the right attention, respect, and time to allow them to tell that story and share those feelings and stuff. And that is something I respect immensely. And that kind of also complements Cinema Wasteland for having that smaller vibe feel because you don't have that horror hound rush. You don't have that, like, you can't share your story because the person behind you in line is going to cut you because you're taking up too much time. So they had time to be able to share those experiences. Um, Tom, who played Mike, he also, he owns the rights to Sleepaway Camp, which is awesome. So I got to hear some really interesting things about that and about um, things that he never, that he doesn't know about until like someone comes to get it signed. And it, it, it's interesting seeing his mind work. He also has a mezcal, uh, Hedonistas de la Fe. I don't speak Spanish, so I hope that sounded cool and correct. Um, and he spoke very highly of it. Now, he's on the board. Of course, he's going to speak highly of it. But I don't see him getting involved in something that he doesn't believe in. So there you go. Uh, 
see Karen. I know she is involved in the Trevor Project. That is near and dear to her heart. She talked very highly of that. Uh, people coming through knew about it already and they were talking about it. Uh, I highly recommend you check that out as well. Uh, suicide prevention and suicide awareness for LGBTQ community. Awesome cause. And I, I don't know, like, I, I can't say enough nice about this cast. So I'll show you the things that I got. Karen was very much take this, take this, take this. So in a good way, she was like grateful, thanking me for helping out. And also extremely important, Karen is new to Instagram. Go give her a follow at the Karen Fields. Do it. So she gave me a shirt from Tom. This is a white shirt that I will wear because I love ringer shirts like this. So a Camp Arawak tee. Stoked on that. And of course, if you watch my videos, you know you have to see the fold. Pow, pow. Flip. There we go. Uh, Tom gave me a pin. Nice Angela pin there. Karen gave me this awesome patch. What else we got? Karen had these stickers at her table. Fuck off, Judy. She was also involved in a short called Judy. You can find it on YouTube. On Friday, she wore the Judy dress. We got this 8 by 10 Now, I liked this picture because Judy is the bitch, the original mean girl. And this one is just like, look how sweet she looks. She's not a bitch. She's the nicest girl at camp. So I like this picture. To Josh, what is she, special or something? Karen Fields, Judy. I wanted a nice quote. The amount of times she wrote fuck off over the weekend was amazing. I, I, and she has the best lines in the movie, and everyone loves fuck off for the right reasons. We also have Langoliers, signed by Chris, who played Albert. Now, you may notice that silver in the background. I was like, dude, please just sign over that. Uh, because when we had this signed by Bronson, he signed it three times. The first time, the marker looked like garbage. So I was like, please just sign over it. So he did. Uh, let's see. Tom also gave me a copy of Return to Sleepaway Camp. So we'll be watching that very soon. And then this right here. Where did he pull that from? Look at this. I had this laid out exactly how I wanted it. And it was Judy here. And then the last minute, I flipped it around and put it up here. I shouldn't have because now I have this weird blank space, but that just means if anybody else from sleepaway camp decides they want to do a signing, that's perfect spot for them. But I also felt bad because I limited Mike to such a small space, whatever. Mimi at the waterfront after the social, Alyssa Rose, Angela, I'll be there, Chris Collier. Uh, the I'll be there was the response that he said to Angela. So I thought that was perfect to have those side by side. I don't have time for your nonsense right now, Karen Fields. Judy, if she were any quieter, she'd be dead. Catherine, who played May. And then let a pro take over from Mike, Tom there. This piece is sick. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Like I said, that spot right there kind of bums me out, but that's entirely my fault for second guessing the layout on this board. I hit the ceiling. Yes. So. Thank you so much to all of you for signing this. If you happen to see this video, if not, it's cool. I'm thanking you anyway. And for Matt to help me get this signed and make that happen. Uh, and let me help out this weekend. And Jason for thinking of me to uh, introduce me to Matt to help out this weekend. I have so many people I want to thank. This video is almost 20 minutes long, if not over. I am so sorry. We're going to close it out with couple more kind words and then a bunch of pictures and then my final do 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 song that I created for you. This was a great experience. I can't wait for Chiller to do this again. I can't wait for future opportunities to do this. This is the shit that I love to do. This is the kind of stuff that I really hope I get to do more of in the future. I love it. It was so much fun. And Karen Fields is one of the sweetest, sweetest people. This next weekend, they're going to be out in Vegas uh, doing a drive-in thing with Joe Bob Briggs. If you're able to go to that, please do check it out. Share your stories of Sleepaway Camp with the cast. They love to hear it. And until next time, be good to each other. Don't be a dick.
do 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 do